Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the mail service that's built into Maverick's server. Now, mail is one of those uh, services that has a lot of technical components to it and can cause a lot of uh, issues one way or the other. And so if you're a home user, just to start off, one of the things I usually tell home users is not to hassle with hosting your own mail. Uh, there are a lot of issues that can go into that in terms of whether the mail gets through or not. When your server's down, your mail's down. Uh, there are issues with spam, uh, all kinds of things that make uh, e email re um, administration a little bit difficult. So that's why I usually tell home users not to do it. And in fact, for myself, I don't host my own uh, mail service on my server just for that reason. I, I don't need the hassle. Now, having said that, I know for many of you, you're still going to jump in anyway. And so in doing that, I still want to walk through this tutorial to help you get that set up. Uh, a couple of things to consider, though, when you're looking at mail, especially if you're a home user, and that is, uh, the first thing is, is port 25 blocked or not? Uh, many ISPs will block port 25, and that's the email port, which means that you won't be able to run your own email server. So you really need to find that out first to make sure that you can make it work. Uh, the second thing is, is do you have a static IP address or not? So do you have an IP address that doesn't change? Now, I know with a lot of dynamic IP addresses, they usually don't change that often. But when you're relying on email, uh, if your IP address does change, you don't get any email until you update all of your DNS uh, to be pointing to that new IP address that you just got assigned. So it's probably not a good idea to host a mail server, uh, especially one that you rely on, uh, if you don't have a static IP address. And so again, that's something you'll want to contact your ISP on. The other thing you have to think about is how is your DNS set up? Now, for those of you that are home users, you probably have what's called a split DNS, and that is that your server is handling everything inside your local network, and then you probably have a domain registrar on the outside uh, that's handling all of your DNS in the outside world. And so your name servers usually will still live with your uh, domain provider, uh, where, whereas um, if you don't have that, if you're not uh, using a split DNS and you host your own web server maybe on a co-location um, facility, uh, like Mac Stadium or something like that, uh, then you have a front-facing server and you handle all the primary DNS, which means that your name servers will actually be on your, you will be your own name server, uh, so to speak. And those are your NS1 and NS2 records. So you want to know, uh, you know, kind of how your DNS is set up. And like I said, if you're a home user, you've got a split DNS uh, setup. Uh, which again can cause uh, you know just just a few other issues because uh, you'll probably have to get your um, some of your records like maybe your PTR records and things like that set up through your um, ISP and so again just a few things that you need to consider so you know how to do that so what I'm going to do in this screencast is show you how to set it up is if you're running a split DNS where you're a home user uh, if you want to see how uh, DNS works for a hosted server uh, you can see uh, the screencast that I've done for Max Stadium uh, on how to set that up uh, for a mountain lion server but it's it's very similar in terms of the setup and so I'll put a, uh, a link here on the screen so let's take a look uh, first at uh, how do we set up our records on the outside uh, to make sure that our mail server will work. And so what I'm going to do is just pull up a web page here, and this is a uh, hover uh, where you know I happen to have a domain registered. What you want to do is go into your DNS area of wherever your domain registrar is, and you're going to want to add a couple of records. Uh, the first record you're going to want to add, you just come in here and, and add new, is you're going to want to add an A record. And for that A record, what you want to do is use uh, mail dot whatever your uh, your domain is. So you know, in my case, it's you know it would be mail dot dot com, and that would be an A record that I would set up that would point to whatever my static IP is or whatever the IP address is uh, of my particular server. So it would probably match whatever you already have down here, and you would set that record up. Okay, so that's one record that you would get uh, get set up. Uh, the other record that you um, that you would set up is you need an MX record, which is a mail exchanger record. And so you'd come in here and you'd click on MX record. And what you would do is in here, you're, you would have your MX record point to your host name of mail 
dot again example.com whatever your um, whatever your domain is you'd have that point there and then you'd give it a priority of one to ten and I'd recommend a ten that's the highest priority that way your email gets through so that's how you would set that up in here uh, if you want to see uh, what that looks like I've got another uh, website here where they showed a uh, kind of a screenshot of what it looked like on another server and you can see here we've got the the mail uh, server set up uh, in this case they have a different IP address because they're pointing it to a different one but normally it would match all of these and then you'd set up your uh, MX record with your your mail dot domain my domain dot com just like they have here uh, and that would be your MX record and then that would be all set so on the outside they know how to relay your email back and forth so you want to make sure that you get those records set up first uh, before you before you get rolling so let me just pop this down here and now let's take a look at the mail uh, service itself uh, so now, what we need to do is, since we created those records on the outside, uh, the first thing we need to do is come over here to DNS. And what you're going to want to do in your DNS is you're going to want to add those records here as well. So you're going to want to add a machine record on here for the same zone. And again, the host name would be mail. Okay, so it would be mail. In my case, my uh, primary name is server.todoltoff.com because I'm hosting a lot of things on the outside. That's why I set this up as a specific server. But back in the DNS uh, tutorial that I went through, yours would, be, yours would probably remove this and it would just be, you know, uh, example.com or whatever it is for you. And you would set that up with uh, your IP address of your server and you put that uh, information in there. I'm just going to cancel that because I don't have that service running. And then the other thing you would do is then you would add a mail exchanger record right here. And that would be for the zone and your mail server would be, again, mail.example.com or whatever you have set up for your domain. And then I'd set the priority of 10. And that way it just matches on the outside. This is not quite as critical, uh, you know, when you're doing your ex uh, mail exchange records on the outside. Um, but it's always nice to match those up. If you are running a hosted server, though, you are in charge of all those MX records. So you need to have this set up. So I'm just going to cancel that because I don't need that. So let's go back into the mail service. Now, a couple of settings that you have for mail. So I just want to walk through those. Uh, you provide mail for whatever your domain is. And so there's my domain right there. You can come in and edit this uh, and change it if you want. And you can also create uh, virtual domains if you have those set up, you know, or maybe you uh, set up a couple virtual domains. Uh, I haven't covered that uh, yet, um, but I'll probably talk about that a little bit when we talk about the website service. Uh, but in this case, I don't, so and most people won't, so we'll just cancel that. Uh, then you have an authentication area here where you can set how you want to authenticate to your email. Uh, right now I've got it set at custom, but you can uh, set it up to be either automatic where people just come right in, uh, or you can have it uh, set up to work with your open directory, which is the service that we set up down here in our other screencast. Uh, Active Directory, which is if your server is bound to a uh, Microsoft Active Directory, uh, you can have it uh, authenticate to that. Uh, you can have it just for local users or uh, custom, which is uh, how it's set up for me. I'm just going to leave that alone uh, based on those settings. And then you can determine how you want it to authenticate. You can use Kerberos, uh, Cram, uh, MD5, ClearText, all these different ways that you can set that up. Uh, if you're using Open Directory, you might want to check Kerberos uh, on that because I because OS 10 Server uses Kerberos, but uh, that uh, that just gives you the different ways in which you can authenticate. So I'm just going to cancel that. Now, push notifications can be set up. Again, we, uh, we set up push notifications before when we were talking about Profile Manager. And so this just uh, is the service that's enabled to allow you to uh, get notifications about your mail. So you'll want to set that up. Uh, you can see how to set up push notifications in an earlier screencast that I've done, but it's pretty simple to do with Apple. Uh, now, a couple of things here. Um, if you do have an ISP, um, some of your ISPs might require you to relay your email through them. So that what happens is they want to check your email before it goes out because they don't want to be accused of spam out there on the internet. And so what they do is they set up a relay for outgoing email where you would check this here and then you would put in what their um, SMTP address is, what their open relay is. You put that in here and then um, you, if they want authentication, you would check that here with your username and password that you have for your ISP. So again, you can see that you'll need to check with your ISP to see how they handle email to know whether or not you need to use their relay or not. Uh, but this is where you would put that information in there if they tell you you need a relay. Okay, so I'm going to cancel that. Now, you can also limit uh, the size of your email to a certain number of megabytes per user. Uh, that's helpful so that you don't take up all your hard drive space with huge attachments. Most of you who have used email service know that there's usually a limit on the size of the attachments you can send. And so here is where you would put that limit. So if you're hosting multiple email 
uh, accounts, I would probably put some kind of limit on there so that you don't end up filling up uh, your hard drive with all the stuff that's sent through. Now, a really important part of uh, administering email is uh, filtering, and so there's a whole filtering menu here that you can use. Uh, you can enable virus filtering, which I would leave on. Uh, you definitely want to have that happen so that it's monitoring for different viruses uh, built into OS X server. Uh, they have that built in there to help you out. Uh, you also have this enable uh, blacklist filtering, and what this is is this uh, connects your server to uh, a blacklist, uh, um, basically, uh, organization that collects known uh, spammer, known spam websites, and allows you to automatically blacklist those. So what you would do when you, when you check this is you're enabling access to zen.spamhouse.org, which is a big uh, collector of those kinds of websites. And what will happen is, is mail will run uh, those things through this website first, and if it's on their blacklist, it will deny that email from coming in. So that that way it'll it'll basically sift through a lot of spam right up front and you won't even see it. And so this is a great service to have on. Uh, I would highly recommend just enabling that um, because uh, this outfit does a really good job of collecting uh, known spammers so that you don't get all that junk mail. Uh, now another uh, option here, and this is added in Maverick Server, which is great because before you used to have to use a terminal command uh, to disable it, is by default what had happened is they would enable gray listing. Now what gray listing is, is it's a way, uh, it's kind of a security feature that basically if someone sends you an email to this uh, email address and it's a new email account that you haven't accepted from before, it will basically uh, reject the first attempt uh, at sending the email. And then once that email server sends it again, it will accept it the second time. And that's just kind of another way to avoid spam. Um, like I said before, the gray list filter was set on by default, and it would cause a lot of confusion because people would think their mail servers weren't working. Uh, now what happens is they disable it by default, but you can enable it by clicking it on here. Um, again, I, it's, it's one of those things you can do it any way you want to do it. Uh, in, in a lot of cases, it's more hassle than it's worth. Um, but if you want that extra level of security and you just you want to make sure that everything's checked out before it comes in and you don't have a lot of critical things that are coming in all the time, you could check that and add that uh, gray list filtering to your mail server as well. Uh, then finally on here, we've got enable junk mail filtering. And on here, uh, basically you can set how aggressive your junk mail filtering is. Uh, you know, you've got uh, super aggressive to moderate to cautious. And you can see it's on a point scale uh, system here. And so it basically uh, allows you to kind of set how aggressive you want this to be. Uh, I think the default is set at six, which is, you know, that's probably a good one uh, to leave it on. But if you wanted to, if you're finding you're not getting emails uh, or things are going to junk, you can kind of come in here and uh, adjust it. Um, again, the least tolerant is aggressive. The most tolerant is cautious. So it just kind of, you know, more, more stuff gets sent to junk, less stuff gets sent to junk filter over here. So you can set all of those things up, and once you set those things up, then, uh, then you're ready to go with all of your email filtering. So I'm just going to cancel that. Uh, so now when you're done, you basically throw the switch, and then your email service is set up and ready to go. And then you can come in and, uh, and test it. And, and basically, you would just set it up exactly like you would set up uh, any, other, uh, ser any other email service. In fact, you can do it right from uh, System Preferences. Let me pull this up right here. You can go into your Internet Accounts. Uh, in here, and then basically just add the service right from here. And uh, you add the account, you put in all of the information that you would normally put in for your email server, your username, uh, your addresses, and all of that, and your email account will be set up and ready to go, and you should be able to access it uh, via email. Let me just close that there. So hopefully that gets you started with the mail service. Like I said, uh, you know, if you're a home user and you got email hosted elsewhere and that works for you, uh, great, stick with that. Um, but if you do want to uh, use the service and play with it, this is how you set it up. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.